Once upon a time near the end of the 80s, knowledge became one of the most valuable commodities in hip hop. Increasing levels of violence and poverty not only instigated a resentment between people of color and the American system, but also a desire for greater cultural awareness. People wanted to know where they came from, and hip hop as a culture was beginning to realize that it was more than just dope beats and flashy cars. As this new enlightenment carried on into the 90s, ancestry became a major source of strength for African Americans and Latinos. Floor track suits and dookie chains suddenly were being replaced by dashikis and Zulu beads. Hip hop was evolving and the changes didn't just stop with fashion. A more conscious era was on the rise. Acts like Brand Nubian and the Jungle Brothers were hitting the scene with music that was both Afrocentric and sonically irresistible. Not only were songs like Ladies First and the Buddy Remix full of black thought, they consisted of a powerful unity between people of color that was unlike anything else in music. Over time, the forefathers and mothers of this progressive movement came together to form rap's greatest collective, the Native Tongues. Now when Quest, Jungle, and De La Soul is at the club, our ritual unfold. Grab our bones and start swinging our hands. Then Jimmy stop clocking and the brand. Jennifer just want to stay The New York City-based crew was a collection of like-minded artists who helped bring consciousness to hip-hop. Its core members consisted of the legendary likes of De La Soul, Queen Latifah, and a group that best personified rap's abstract evolution, a tribe called Quest. There really was like De La Soul, you know, De La Soul, Jungle Brothers, Tribe Called Quest, like clearly were involved with each other's business. And all three of them had great records out. I mean, you know, th those are great groups, really great groups. But also and at that, that, at that time, to, you know what I mean? Like you hear about great groups, but you don't really see their involvement with, with each other, but they're on each other's records and making really, really good there, records. There also... Hailing from the Boulevard of Linden in the Borough of Queens, the trio of Q-Tip, Fife Dog, and Alicia He Muhammad debuted with People's Instinctive Travels and in a Path of Rhythm in 1990. The revolutionary production and lyricism on tracks like Benita Applebum and Can I Kick It put their genius on display for the masses. I'm Ali Shaheed Muhammad from A Tribe Called Quest, and I'm the sound provider of the group. I'm Jerobi, seldom seen and never heard. Hi, I'm Q-Tip. I'm an Aries. I'm a sick puppy. I'm Fife, and I rhyme along with him. They brought the jazz, they brought the bass, but in 1991, in their follow-up album, The Low End Theory, a Tribe Called Quest brought one of the greatest hip-hop songs of all time. Featuring Charlie Brown, Dingo D, and Busta Rhymes from Leaders of the New School, third single off of Tribe's sophomore album is not only celebrated as the greatest posse cut of all time, but a landmark track that bumps in any era. Similar to Queen's We Will Rock You, its opening notes are unmistakable to even the most oblivious hip-hop head. With knocking drums from the Jimi Hendrix experience's Little Miss Lover and menacing organs out of Brother Jack McDuff's Obligato, Scenario holds a sound that's original, infectious, full, and out of control in the best possible way. It's an undeniable banger and the greatest example of Tribe Sonic's superpowers. In addition to being the biggest song from rap's greatest group, the significance of Scenario lies in its position as the peak of one of hip-hop's most influential eras. Its verses have been quoted by everyone from Nicki Minaj to the Bare Naked Ladies. Its chaotic energy has inspired acts like Black Moon and Onyx. Kendrick Lamar's supergroup Black Hippie has even gone so far as to cover the classic. Its groundbreaking music video was just as experimental as Tribe's signature sound, featuring an array of clever visuals and cameo appearances from Redman and Spike Lee. It was clear that everyone in or around Tribe was operating at a peak groove. This was an example of rare form on display. Snares cut, the, the, the kicks were big, like the bass was big. That Tribe was like putting your feet in a new, fresh pair of kicks. Low End Theory came out. 
Nothing was touch and try. Nothing. Nothing. Low in theory. Forget it. Shut up. Get off it out of my face. It's the ill issue in the world. In what feels like an epic lyrical relay race, both camps came with flows and bars that were packed with bravado, wit, and charisma. Look no further than Dinko D's clever and complex wordplay. In just a handful of bars, he does everything from rhyming lines of similar sounding words to incorporating the spelling of his own name into a flow. So yo, the D, what the O, incorporate I-N-C into a flow. Fuck, flip, flat, flat, first, this foul, fight, 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 laugh, yo, how that sound? Never the one to be outshined, Tribe's Five Foot Assassin, Fife Dog, puts forth one of the most potable performances of all time. While everyone on the track came to play, no one could compare to the dungeon dragon that was bust to rhymes. Assigned by Q-Tip to close out the track, the Brooklyn native laid down a career-defining verse on par with Snoop Dogg's feature on Nothing But A G Thing. Very rarely can you point to a moment in history when an entire art form is flipped on its head, but this was one of them, and the man responsible was a relative rookie. With all kinds of roars and booms, Busta's wordplay was unexpected and unconventional. With precise lyricism and bombastic delivery, Buster crafted a verse that embodied hip-hop's greatest example of organized chaos. What other artist could grunt all over the track one moment, then deliver this technically brilliant gem the next? Watch as I combine all the juice from the mind. Heal up, wheel up, bring it back, come rewind. Powerful impact, boom, boom. from the cannon. Now bragging, try to reap a mind. Just imagine, both can't build, there is necessary. When digging into my library, here, Buster revolutionizes the art of rhyming with the use of syncopation, or the disturbance of the regular flow of rhythm. By fracturing the word vocabulary, he's able to stretch it out for almost an entire bar as a means to rhyme it with whatever he wants. His verse is a tour de force in not only what to say on wax, but how to say it. Scenario stands as one of hip hop's greatest songs because it made people reimagine what was sonically possible at the time. By combining their own unique vision with the musings of jazz legends like Lonnie Smith, A Tribe Called Quest was able to create a quintessential moment in music history. Q-Tip has stated that the Low End Theory stands for two things. The Low End Theory, we got it from the 808s as synonymous with hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So but the bottom, of, just the, a lot boom, of low end. the boom, the low end. Yeah. Plus, as a double meaning, it's talking about how the black male in America is put on the low end of the totem pole in society, and they always pin us with, you know, drug selling and toting and guns. And we trying to flip the script and say that, you know, here we are, three black youths, black young men doing something positive, you know what I'm saying? Its rambunctious signature track honors both concepts by capturing the creativity and consciousness that embodied the genre. Scenario was a celebration of tribe as champions of a new sound, a celebration of rap as well as jazz. It was also a celebration of unity, combining the forces of two dynamic crews who represented their time timelessly. 